Hello, Elge Valverta here. On this first episode of Gear Talk with Elge, I sat down with a great Finnish guitar player Erkka Korhonen at his studio to discuss about his gear. So, Interview slash rig series, which I'm planning to do, and Erkka Korhonen is, guys. is the is the first uh, first one. Uh, Erkka is a uh, those of you who don't know him, he's a great Finnish guitar player and producer, and and a founder of uh, one of the or if not the biggest touring and recording acts in Finland for quite many recent years so uh yeah maybe i'll let erka to briefly talk about himself and then we're gonna go and check out his uh quite impressive stadium or arena rig so to say <laughs> okay hi guys um um i'm erka and uh thanks for having me okay the check is in the mail um <laughs> uh, it's uh, a Privilege and a pleasure to be here. And uh, yes, I've been uh, the recent years. We've been touring uh, Finland with uh, sort of like a uh, heavy symphonic rock all-star combo project that uh, tours every year around Christmas time. You can basically compare us for the uh, American group Trans Siberian Orchestra, and uh, we're pretty much doing the same thing. But since it's Finland, it's a bit heavier, and uh, and. Uh, We've been touring for 15 years now. Uh, out of three of the last years, have been uh, arena tours, so it eventually has become uh, quite big. Elga actually, as as has your rig. Yeah, <laughs> everything grows at the same time. Yes, ego grows, yeah. rig grows. <laughs> and it, so, and anyway, anyway, Elga has been our our A and R, or at the record company. So, so we've been working very closely mm. together on the project. El Elga has been a really important factor on making things grow, uh, and 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 luckily we've been able to sell a lot of albums, albums at the same time. There are several gold and platinum and multi platinum albums that we have, and we're really lucky to have succeeded in that. I also play in a band called Dark Sarah, uh, which is like a uh, symphonic. Uh, um, symphonic uh, metal act very cinematic style of music with orchestrations and and stuff and at the moment as we speak dark sarah is going to get signed to one of the biggest central european metal labels and we're looking for maybe late summer release this year so check it out it's going to be really cool and we're really happy with the album in my opinion it's the best album that the band has done and i can say that because i'm not writing the songs i'm just playing guitar and, and uh Every now and then I tour with Jolin Turner, who's been a singer in Rainbow, uh, Yngwie Malmsteen and Deep Purple. So that's a really, really good job and childhood dream for me. Definitely. Yeah, I can imagine that. Pretty cool. Yeah. So, uh, well, yeah, your rig, I mean, we, you know, like you told, we've been, we've been playing together, working together. You've been producing my, my, my uh, previous band, God's Place album, and, and we've always you know, discussed gear and we, we like gear, apparently. <laughs> Mainly just not because of the gear, but what it does and, you know, because we all trying to chase the sound we have in your head and uh, sometimes you need more to do that, sometimes less. But uh, th this is, uh, looks pretty impressive, uh, pretty complicated, but isn't, is it? I, I know that there's uh, really, really cool things because you, uh, uh, you told me uh, briefly uh, about how why and how you, you you came to use this kind of setup so maybe if you can do a little you know background on why and yeah. overall well it looks like a lot of stuff um uh, the thing is that um 
I want to have some options here because, mm-hmm. uh, as we know, a lot of times on, on tour and on the road, you know, things happen. I've had power tubes melting in my amplifier in soundcheck uh, and stuff happening. So, so I wanted to make a, a touring rig in which uh, I have options if accidents happen, mm-hmm. and that that's why there are a lot of stuff I could basically do just with you know t- we could take some stuff out there but uh, eventually in a rig uh, where you are playing when you play uh, naturally when you have a rig like this you need to have roadies you need you know need to be on, on the level where mm. you have a guitar tech and uh, since the uh, the weight of this case itself is over 120 kilos yeah and to hook this on because when, when we actually <laughs> you know, real thing when we when when we connected or when Eric connected he he actually called his guitar tech a few times that hey dude uh, yeah <laughs> support needed <laughs> <laughs> so anyway anyway uh, the thing is that uh, you need to have a, some sort of a power center for everything so that you get clean electricity mm. for your gear because yeah. electricity is a very important factor it has to be clean has to be isolated mm-hmm. and uh, so so that so that you avoid getting ground loops from there, um, and uh, and then then, but basic stuff wireless. Uh, then uh, this is a uh, sort of like a switching station with which I can decide where I go in the rig. Should I use a cable mm-hmm. or wireless? Uh, am I using a real cabinet or am I going to the two-note speaker simulator? Uh, Am I using the heads or am I going st- straight from the pedals into Axe FX? Mm-hmm. So that's a backup plan right there. Yeah. Uh, then there's a Wawa. Now I want to have it on the rack because it's a lot cleaner that way. And then I have the, uh, you know, the possibilities are endless with this one. You have the, you can choose from six different ranges, the Q value, mm-hmm. the boost and a six pan EQ. So, so that's a really nice feature. I have the controller right here on the pedal board. That you'll see in the pictures later. Uh, then, Looper for the pedals and uh, switcher for the switching the uh, amplifier yeah. channels. Uh, the pedal thing itself, it's quite simple. I have a have a Bogner Harlow compressor, which is always on. Mm-hmm. Okay. It, it does a very cool uh, upper mid range uh, enhancement thing yeah. Yeah. Uh, and some compression there. Um, then there's another compressor here. That's um, if you want to have it. If I play on a single coil guitar. Yeah. I can get some more body and sustain, uh-huh, yeah, yeah. and also if I want to have like a sort of like a very California kind of squeeze tonality, mm-hmm. I can add that there, so you can have it oh, sustained cool. without having distortion. Mm, a couple, yeah, couple yeah. of overdrives, BB preamp, very clean, nice. Uh, Zen drive, a bit dirtier. Mm-hmm. Classic Phase 90. Yeah. Classic stuff. Univibe. Script logo. Yeah. 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 Univibe uh, and uh, Smart Gate. So my first noise reduction unit is right after these pedals before the amplifiers. Mm-hmm. Okay. And there's actually, you can see one of the, uh, I have two pedal brakes in the rack. I have the CS12 and CS6 from True Tone uh, doing, getting, because this rig needs a lot of power. <laughs> That's quite the print. <laughs> yeah. Then uh, from, from the pedals, as, as yeah. usual, you yeah. go into the amplifier. Yeah. And yeah. I'm using two heads. Yeah. They're both Bogners. Uh, I have the Ecstasy 101B and then I have the Ubershaw. Um, and they're they're on like all the time. Yeah, so both are on all yeah. the time, and there's but an amp- but not uh, not at the same time. Not at the same. No, yeah. yeah, yeah. So so we have an amp switcher mm-hmm. here that uh, I control through this box. Yeah. Um, so the amp switcher switches be- between the amplifiers, so it decides which amp goes to the uh, head. So yeah. there's like a load. Cabinet. Re- yeah. Uh, sorry, cabinet. Yeah. 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 There's a load resistor there. Mm-hmm. So I go in into this uh, amp switcher, and all both the heads are hooked into that one. Cool. So, uh, so and then the uh, the uh, RJM music thing, RJ16, decides the channel switching and the boosts and the loop functions. In yeah. the loops of the amps, I have a classic Rocktron Hus 2 CX noise reduction. Yeah. Each channel is this channel is this head, and this channel okay. is this head. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you have uh, the control uh, like according to the yeah head. Okay. According to the head and according to the situation, you okay. know. Yeah. Sometimes on stages. You might have to position your guitar gear right next to the uh, PA power amplifiers, and yeah. that's that's a situation right there, you know, yeah. because they yeah. they start interacting because the, yeah. a big rack of power amplifier it creates its own 
atmosphere. Cycle. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm so so it gets it gets you know yeah uh, uh, sort of like uh, it gets uh, noise from there and and, yeah. and so so of course light dimmers are another story altogether. That's that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I've, so, I've, so, yeah, so so maybe you need to yeah. adjust them every now and then yeah, according yeah. to the situation yeah, yeah. and then if you're using you, you could be using a generator electricity mm. or you use the in-house electricity all you know yeah, yeah it's yeah. always a changing factor yeah yeah, yeah. but uh, i mean this, this is old so uh you the haven't, ages, you haven't yeah. found the need to no, update I, yeah i think it works great it's, yeah. it, uh, i mean i i had that or i had that too yeah. when i had a rag gear but not nowadays i i, I use only on uh, like yeah pedalboard old school stuff but i i remember that this this was really yeah, it, really it, good i mean i guess it's the, the first one rock from made and and you know still yeah works i don't well, think, I, they, I think they, they had hush 2c was the first one hush 2b uh-huh this is a bit of a later model it okay was on the stereo thing i i know that for example isp is coming out yeah with the with a new product now they've, they've uh-huh. created something really cool okay um and they introduced it at the nam show but it's not out on the market yet mm-hmm so anyway, but you know, this is this has yeah. been working great, and and you know, to be honest, the less I need to squeeze this in, the better. But sometimes you need to, but but for yeah. me, I, I I don't notice any sound de- degradation, yeah. you yeah. know. So uh, yeah, it works for me. Cool. From the heads, uh, we go into uh, THD hot plate, which you know, with what I can uh, adjust the volume. This mm-hmm. will be this is my master volume right here. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's handy. At, at the moment, we are like. 12 decibels down but it's still i can tell you it, it's it's loud in here <laughs> so because i like to drive the amps quite hard yeah i mean that's you know to get some of the yeah. uh, sweat from the power tubes happening yeah you know it gives me as we talked earlier especially with the ubershaw when you drive it harder you get this mid-range yeah. roll into the yeah. sound so yeah. it's not that hollow it doesn't yeah. give you the v yeah EQ. yeah yeah even though it's my heavy rhythm tone i still like to have it like it to have mid-range yeah and from there, uh, we go into the cabinet. Uh, today we're going into the Bogner uh, 412, but on stage these days I have a, a cabinet that's built into a monitor case, mm-hmm. and so it's facing me. Yeah. I, I, you know, I don't need the cabinet. And it's like to, one by twelve. Uh, one by twelve. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't need the cabinet to point into the audience Moving. and leak there. I'm just, you know, we, yeah. we, we have it mic'd. Yeah. And uh, and it it's you know I get the feedback. Mm-hmm. And uh, at the moment, they're actually uh, Anna, Anna Gain and Woodworks is building uh-huh, a guitar okay. cabinet for me at the moment as oh, we speak. Okay. That's shaped like a monitor, oh, yeah, but it's yeah, yeah. you know they've be, they've measured the the sizes and, and oh. the angles and everything. Oh. So it's it's designed by Lassi Ukkonen oh, and Anna Gain and makes the yeah. you know okay. builds it. So that's coming to me probably be during the spring. Okay. I, I think Steve Y uses a little bit similar yeah. setup. Yeah. 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 He has yeah. some of that stuff going yeah. on too. Yeah. From the then we mic and this is where it gets interesting and this is where, you know, we really go outside the box. Uh, usually when people they're using their post effects, they might have their reverbs, delays, mm-hmm. whatever. Uh, they have it already in the cabinet. Yeah. But I don't. Uh, I have the pedals there. But we go, uh, as we see, we have two microphones over there. I like to have a combination of 57 Shure mm-hmm. and a 201 Biodynamic. Okay. We go into a mic preamp that I have right here. This is a warm audio stereo. It's, it's basically like a clone of a Neve 1073. Yeah. From here, uh, we, both mics go in there. And uh, we have a direct feed into the FOH mm-hmm. for, the, for the mixer and, and the monitors. Yeah. And then there is a summing box inside the rack that sums those both microphones and feeds it to the axe effects. So I get my effects from the mic sound instead of having them in the loops. And this is studio uh-huh. quality now. Yeah. yeah. So I get uh, in my in-ears, I have a dry sound right in the middle that's totally dry. It, it could have a phaser or univibe on yeah, it. Yeah, some of that. But still, yeah, yeah. all the effects are in stereo. So they, so they create this really cool, almost yeah. like a surround thing wow. in my head yeah. and everything is very clear you know we have to make a separation between what's clean and what's clear yeah because my tones most of the time they're, they're not clean <laughs> they're dirty as fuck yeah <laughs> but, but uh but uh, uh the effects are you know the separation is, yeah. is yeah, yeah, beyond yeah. what yeah, i've yeah. ever and, heard and, I, and i think the the front of house guy likes 
Well, yeah, well, once he got used to the fact that he has uh, separate levels, yeah. we, we just went through how he should okay. work on them yeah. to get my balance. Yeah. He yeah. just has to gain everything the same way and has the faders at yeah. the same volume. Yeah. Then he has my balance. Yeah, yeah. But basically, it's like what you do in the studio, so you add you know delays and stuff yeah. after, and yeah. basically what you're doing is you're kind of doing the same, but in yeah. a live situation, so in, yeah. in real time. So this is actually... Uh, pretty revolutionary. I, I don't know if it's revolutionary, but I, I haven't uh, uh, heard or come came across with this kind of kind of setup. But uh, it, it definitely makes sense because you know if you can do it, yeah, why can't? I, I think the Larry Carlton has been using okay. something like this. He has cabinets for his effects. Yeah, like, I think Eddie Van Halen like, has like, like PA like, cabinets. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it's sort of like a modernized version of the classic wet dry wet system. Mm, yeah, yeah. But the thing is that you don't have wet cabinets. Yeah. You just have them wet, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. in the in ears. Yeah. Uh, and, and David Torn does something like mm -hmm. that too. Yeah. Uh, but in, in the wet dry wet system, still you are not having the mic'd sound in yeah. the effects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, anyway because they mic'd the, the effect cabinets. If, yeah, well. yeah, yes. that's like Van Halen does. Yeah, yeah, and Ulgather I mean. and all of those guys who used yeah. those big Bradshaw, yeah. Bradshaw systems yeah. in the 80s. Uh, anyway, uh, so so that's that's a cool way for me to do it. And of course, when the soundman gets used to the songs mm -hmm. on the tour and stuff, he can yeah. start making little alterations. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and 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 he uh, actually our mixing engineer said that uh, he opens up. I, I sum the mics. Uh, okay. As you know, as you know, the summing box is in yeah. there, as I yeah. told. But he opens it up just a tiny bit in the stereo picture. He said he can widen the sound. It's still basically mono. Yeah. But he opens them like between five to ten. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, to make it a bit wider. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, uh, it's, but, it's, but he can yeah, still yeah. locate, yeah. focus and locate it okay. in the PA yeah. picture. Yeah. Yeah. Because he has, I think that he has padding automations going on in the show okay. and, and stuff, yeah. stuff like that. But but uh, it's been working really nicely once we got it working. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, so uh, of course, a lot of cabling and, and a lot of work has, has mm, done. Yeah, yeah, my yeah. guitar tech, Peter Sepakoski, did an amazing job on this. Uh, and, and it's still a work under pro progress. I, I have to say that we're still searching for the right placements for mm -hmm. some of the units. Yeah, yeah. And... Uh, and uh, uh, and uh, so, some units might change during mm -hmm. time. Yeah, you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, at the moment, we're going with these. And uh, but hey, would you like to hear some sound examples? Yeah, yeah. I mean, now, now, uh, I must say it's pretty impressive and uh, makes uh, makes all the sense when you, you hear it when it's explained. But of course, you know, if you, if you could uh, go through some some basic sounds, maybe. Exp Explain yeah. what's happening yeah. I have in, a in there. I have like five presets that I've been using lately. Uh, these were done for the Christmas tour, and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, first there is a like, like a clean tone uh, that's uh, very wet clean tone. Yeah. But as as I said earlier, uh, the dry sound is right there in the middle. Yeah. All the chorusing and 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 stuff, the delays and reverb are happening in the stereo okay. picture. Yeah. So uh, let's see. And and one clarification. So. In the room, we're not hearing the effects. No, we're right? not. Yeah, we're, we're only hearing a dry cabinet, and since we're recording this, uh, you will hear uh, the effects when when the edit yeah. is, is is done. So uh, it's yeah. it's pretty pretty interesting. <laughs> of stuff there is a uh, I have a little harmonizer that's on all the time okay it's like plus, like plus uh, everything everything okay plus minus six cents uh -huh. but I just open it up briefly it's not as evident as for example on Eddie Van Halen's tone yeah, yeah it yeah, just gives yeah. me a little bit of a stereo okay. spread oh. into the sound and but then on top of that I have a chorus on this uh -huh. one okay and uh, then there's a stereo delay opened up like just tiny bit there's a quarter note and a triplet ah, there. yeah and, and then a reverb so that's basically what's going on on that tone uh, it works and it's coming from uh, ecstasy right yeah this is the ecstasy green channel yeah, yeah. yeah. ecstasy green channel is this one uh, I, I usually drive the uh, 
the clean channel on an amp it has a master volume mm -hmm. I have it set up in a way where I, I set up the master volume on four and oh. then I then I use the gain as a volume uh -huh. so so that's uh, that's why you know you get the depth and, and if, if I go into a humbucker mm -hmm. right on the verge of breaking up yeah yeah that's, yeah, that's true yeah oh. so the thing is that that's how you get the depth Ah. Because I don't like master volumes on, on, on clean channels, so so on this one there's a master volume. I crank it up, and I use the gain as a volume. Oh, okay. And then there's a sweet spot, you know, yeah, yeah. where it's about to start ah. distorting. Yeah, that's, I, that's pretty I, cool. I still can do, you know, for example, finger picking stuff on the on the treble humbucker. Mm -hmm. I still can do that mm -hmm. and not have it distorted. Yeah, but on this guitar, uh, when I put it on the the middle position, mm -hmm. I get this single coil. Ah, so okay. on parallel, so ah. I can get this. That's so that, nice. That's yeah. like as close as you can get, get to, to a strat a, yeah, on, a, on a guitar yeah, like this. Yeah, yeah. I, I I don't need to have like a uh, split for. You know, I just you know need to split to be on the middle position. Mm. I have enough double humbucking guitars with the Jimmy Page thing <laughs> happening in the middle, so so I was able to do the modification for this. Yeah, one. yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, then there is a uh, we stay on the ecstasy head. Okay. There's okay. A, like a rock crunch thing. That's the blue channel, mm -hmm. and uh, it loads uh, with the boost of the head on. I can take the boost out, so it lightens up a bit, and then uh, I also can add an overdrive on top of it to give it a bit more hair. Okay. That's the BB preamp. Yeah. Uh, it's really nice, especially on rhythm tones, because yeah. it's solid. And it's very transparent. Mm. So the the so it's, it's not like a, a tube screamer. No, like, no. Yeah, but it, it, you know yeah. the character of the amp stays really like intact. Okay. It doesn't okay. really change. Yeah. Uh, also on the clean tone, uh, it you know we can have the exact same thing happening. We can try it later uh, if we go through mm. the uh, go through the uh, those switches. But anyway, you know that's what I can do and uh, with with the uh, the blue channel. So it's three. For example, three different levels of, yeah. of gain that lead into the uh, into the main crunch tone. So uh, the main crunch tone is the Übershall, and that's okay. the Übershall's job on this rig is to provide that the heaviest of the heavy crunch that I that I need. Okay. Uh, we're still just only using. I think that the gain is not even at one o'clock. Oh, so yeah, there's yeah, it's like still plenty know, of yeah. plenty of gain left on the thing, but and do you have a any booster before or no, it's just no, yeah, just, just a, a compressor just, a, okay. just the uh, Harlow which is on okay. all the time but it's, it doesn't really boost anything yeah it just a, squeezes it a okay. bit yeah and gives it the uh, the upper mid-range thing that yeah. it does I can't really explain it and that's why the box is so annoying <laughs> because you know that you cannot do that thing without it but anyway anyway the uh, the crunch sound is <laughs> Since we're having the head running quite hot, yeah, I get that mid range. Yeah, it's like yeah, it doesn't have yeah, the uh, yeah, and you the, feel it in, on the, on. I mean, I'm sitting here. I can I can feel it on my chest. Like it's yeah, and that's what that's what I what I like also. I mean, a mid scooper tone is a uh, probably good if you're playing in your bedroom with the yeah. you know. That's I, I guess it's called the bedroom sound. Yeah, and the bedroom sound doesn't have a positive echo. <laughs> So it's yeah. it usually means that everything's cool and lots of. But this is like uh, it's uh, pretty unforgiven. So you have to know how to play. Okay. But then when you do know how to play, then it's fantastic and it's really, I think, 
what the essence of the electric guitar is to like it. you know you should feel it in your chest oh yeah the thing is that uh, we're now um, playing by ourselves but still uh, I'd like to have the bass frequencies quite controlled yeah uh, even though in, in this is not the biggest room available but still <laughs> This is standard tuning, so I don't need to go to the bass player's department. Yeah, yeah. So I, I stay away from there, yeah. keep it tight and focused, and, yeah. and then the bass comes under that yeah. and takes its own territory. Yeah, exactly. That's how you, how you. That's I. I, I think uh, many, many players made that mistake that uh, they 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 want to you know I want a bass and blah blah blah, but maybe they don't realize that actually if you listen to some albums and, and live songs. The bass isn't coming from the guitar because yeah. mid range should be gu guitars, frequency range, and bass, like the name suggests, the bass guitar yeah. should take care of the bass. Of course, you have you need to have like certain kind of body and bass to the guitar, but uh, but 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 uh, this is it's it's uh, I like the you know. The thing the is that with those cabinets, they usually don't go that much under 100 hertz. The, the, then you just if you drive too much bass in there. Then it's just start you know start hearing the cabinet resonation and all of that noise. Yeah. And actually on the preamp, I have the uh, bass cut set at 80 hertz. Mm -hmm. So it's there's so, like so a high pass filter. Yeah, there's yeah. a high pass filter at 80 hertz here, and it also helps the mic sound. For example, on on a on a stage, yeah. you might have the subwoofers quite mm -hmm. close or even yeah. under the stage, and, and then there's like leakage coming in. So yeah. that kind of cleans up oh, the yeah. bottom end that could leak into the mics yeah. on yeah. the stage. Yeah. So so that that works nicely, nicely there. So this is a sound that I'm really a big fan of, and and uh, this is the sound that we actually have on the album since I've used most of the most of the rhythm mm. tracks that we played on this. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Uh, so that's the Ubershow's job on this rig is to provide me with this, and and that's why I ended up having two heads because I was doing most of the stuff with the ecstasy alone. Okay. I've I've never used the Ubershow live uh -huh. uh, before before this. And that's why I needed to have the double because I wanted to bring that sound, yeah. and uh, and we were able to do it. But lead tones. Yeah, lead I tones. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I have so two. We, so sorry, we've discovered clean. Yes. Uh, and from there up, yeah. you know, couple of crunchies, couple you crunchies. Uh, the the chug metal yeah. uh, slash heavy tone, and now uh, lead tones. And I guess we're back to back on the ecstasy. Yes. We're, we're going to be on the ecstasy's red channel uh, now. I have two lead tones. Mm -hmm. Uh, the first one is uh, uh, more focused. Uh, it gives me um, a mono delay that's right on the center and actually has a dynamic control to oh. it. So it's ducked. Okay. So so the delay goes away a bit when I play. Ah, and then uh, and then it comes back when I stop playing. Ah. So the idea is that, for example, uh, if we do. It's clean. Yeah. So so people hear the separation yeah, yeah. on the fast. And then stuff. when you stop, it's uh, yeah, and then, yeah. then then the delay comes. Yeah. And it's just a mono quarter note. Uh huh. Yeah. So that's that's yeah. one of the three delays that I have. I have the one that I had on the clean song, mm -hmm. and then there's this. That's very simple. And the only other effect there in these lead tones is the harmonizer. Uh -huh. So you barely hear it. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, it just gives me a little bit of a spread. Yeah. Okay. Uh, nice. and, and a little bit of a. It's like a D tune. More than a harmonizer. Uh, Usually, yeah. people when you talk about harmonizers, they say, "Oh, you yeah. have one fifth lower or an octave yeah, above uh, yeah, or whatever." Yeah. So anyway, then there's the, uh, the the tone that I like to play, the melodies and the slower mm -hmm. parts, that has a delay that's very much designed for longer delay times. Okay. Uh, and that uh, that one is a, a rhythmic one. Uh, forgive me, but I'm not able to explain what it does. Uh, it does this. So it basically melts into a reverb in the end. Uh, uh, wait, is it is it is it from the AX effects? Yes, AX it, effects? it's a it's a dual rhythmic thing that goes back and forth in the stereo picture, <laughs> and the feedbacks feed in, into each other. So wow. it's it's very much of a thing that John Petrucci does. Uh, so oh, okay. so he basically he gives away all the info. Okay, so, so is, is is that 
Yeah, it's basically that priest. Okay. Yeah. okay. He, he gives away all the info on his rig and huh? on his gear and on his effects and everything. He doesn't hide. That's nice. He, he, yeah. he doesn't have a, have a reason to like yeah. have any secrets. Yeah, yeah. So because as a player on his own thing, nobody can touch him. Yeah, I mean, yeah. 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 So, so, so he gives everything away. Uh -huh. He gave this delay preset away uh -huh. uh, for the axe effects. And I, so I, I uh, recreated it with a slight twist that I take a, a cut some of the high end. On my, uh, on my uh, the preset, the delay cuts off at 4,500 hertz. Okay. So it doesn't go full frequency. Uh -huh. So it gives me a bit more of a sort of like an analog delay vibe. Mm. Uh, okay. So, okay. But this one works really nicely on all the melodies. Uh, let's see what we have here. <laughs> Hearing, I, I, I am looking forward to hearing that. But uh, since imagine if you could. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, you you demonstrated pretty well. So yeah. I can. <laughs> so so that's that's the beauty of, of having that thing yeah. inside your head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you have a good monitoring with a good system. Yeah. And yeah. then then you get. Yeah. And then your you know, your basic core, heart of your yeah. sound or tone, whatever you may yeah. may call it, it's like. It's a lot Pure? clearer. Yeah, it's a lot clearer. Clearer. Yeah, yeah. clearer is exactly the yeah, word, clear. as, as we discussed yeah, earlier. Yeah, yeah. So that's basically the presets that I have. Mm -hmm. Then I have a possibility of adding stuff, as, yeah, as, as okay. we discussed earlier. Let's see, let's go here. Uh, now we go into uh, the Ubershow's clean channel for a second. So, so we go into the Ubershow, which is a great uh, platform for trying different sounds. Mm -hmm. uh, sounds really good. So we're, we're now on the Ubershow's clean, clean channel. channel. It has a bit more headroom than the Ecstasy Green Channel. It's not as deep. Ah. It's a bit bolder. Okay. Actually. So you, you like Ubershow's Clean Channel more as a, a, a pedal platform. Yeah. You see, it's, it's not as it doesn't have that depth, but it has a boldness okay. and a headroom. Yeah. It's not as close to distorting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's you can hear it's it's so, uh, it's it's like. So we can try these different things. I have a, you know, for the first row on the pedal, I have the analog stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah. here's the, uh, the the other compressor. If we are. Slight booster. We can actually take it down just a bit, maybe. Not much. Mm -hmm. And then we can have a like unity gain. So on single clause, as I said, it's really yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. Then there's the BB, BB preamp. As you can see, the character of the amp stays yeah, exactly yeah, as it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's the send drive, and that's uh, I have that set up a bit lower again, uh -huh. but there, there's a grit there. Sort of like more character. Yeah. And you can add those two on top of each other if you want to, of course. Uh -huh. Very clean yeah. pedal distortion. Yeah. And then, of course, you can have the second compressor on to really squeeze it out. Sort of like a very much of a sustain, but without much distortion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's very very cool. The next one is uh, doesn't really need introduction. Classic. The classic phase ninety. Yeah. And it's a 
script logo. Yeah, custom the, shop the, script logo. Yeah, yes. not the the. I ha I have both, and and, and uh, I actually like the the script logo. It's there's something. Yeah, there's something there. Yeah. Smoother, I don't know, whatever. It, yeah. it tastes better. <laughs> yeah, it's, know, but, uh, it's a bit, bit of a different, different yeah, uh, circuit. Yeah. yeah, the black logo is like a, a bit more aggressive. I, yeah. I've actually, I think, the album, the God's Plague album, you produced actually here in the studio. I yeah. think we used the black logo then, but it was some really like distinctive sound. But uh, overall, in general, I like the the script logo a bit more, but uh, I remember that we I think we tried and we ended up yeah. using the black logo. Yeah, because we we wanted to have really sort of like an effect kind of sound. Effect I, kind I think of that sound. we yeah. changed some modulation effects after each other. Yeah, and probably. we were able to create this intro tone to Gears of Destruction or something. Like yeah, 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 yeah. There was there was that and uh, the flanger. Or what? Yeah, whatever. We did something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then there's another another one on a very much of the same family, the Univibe. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, the Robin Trower thing. <laughs> It's not like the, the stone cousin of Phase 90. So, so you you you're you're still on the clean channel? Yeah. But the, uh, is the UDY doing the? Because now it's like a it's a. Yeah, I think it comes from the the, the pickup. But, uh, there's a bit of a grit there. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I guess that you know since we're going to the buffer on the pedal board, you might give it a. Bit oh of yeah, yeah yeah yeah, but yeah. it's very cool. I mean that. Uniwab, yeah, Bridge of Sides, you know. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah all, kids, check it out. What? Watch it and learn. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, on the second row, I have stuff for the uh, stuff for the uh, uh, axe effects. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, there's an octaver there. We're not gonna hear it now, but it's gonna be on the hopefully gonna be on the audio. <laughs> so it's like <laughs> nothing special there. Octaver. Yeah. 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 Uh, then uh, a tremolo. I have Tremolo and Leslie as post effects. I like to have it because ah. on, on amplifiers, if you look at classic Fender yeah. or, or, or uh, Vox, mm -hmm. those effect, uh, Tremolo is always after. Ah, okay. It's always before the power amp. It's always after the EQ, ah. after the gain. Yeah, yeah, so you're not I'm not feeding, driving, driving yeah, the yeah. amp with the Tremolo, no. but it, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 it's, yeah, it's in post yeah, for yeah. me. So, so basically, this is my Tremolo setup. Leslie, the same thing. The Leslie is a cabinet. It's the last thing on the single chain. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I have the Leslie here, also, you know, after, after the uh, the amps. Yeah. Uh, so that's uh, basically, you know, all, all the special stuff that I have here that I can access. Yeah. I can access the boost of the of the XC head. Uh huh. And uh, there's tap tempo there, and uh, so so that's plenty enough for me of control over this rig. How many sounds like let's say on the on the Raskasta Yolo, a heavy heavy Christmas in English? How many sounds you basically use during the show? Those five presets. Sounds? Five. Yes. Oh, five. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. then you just add stuff on, yeah. on the fly whenever. I, I can you... add stuff on the fly. Most of the changes that uh, that happen in that show come from the computer. Since uh -huh, everything so is that we have a time code for everything, with the exception of one song. Okay. There's a time code, and all the changes come from there. Uh -huh. So 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 basically, I can be anywhere on the stage, and that... at, at any given time, uh, and I've control uh, programmed a MIDI file for each song uh -huh. for the computer to change the sound. I yeah. can override any of those commands. Okay. With my feet. Uh huh. Uh, but if you if you let's say you, you decided to order right something, but uh, in you know when the but when the next command comes, comes then, then then again the computer takes. Ah, okay. Yeah, uh, when well, the that's next very, command very, comes, that's smart. Yeah. The tap tempo comes from there. Uh, everything amp channels I can add you know effects by CC commands uh -huh. from there. So so it's really handy. Uh, so I don't really have to be worried about if I'm on the drum riser and suddenly mm. I uh, understand shit I have to be there in two bars. Yeah, I, 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 have that, sound. yeah I have that well somewhere and I'm yeah. like uh, yeah. on this part I should be uh, oh and yeah. then <laughs> yeah yep yeah. yeah. so so it's that's it's really handy yeah and then I have uh, I have one wah controller over here mm -hmm. and then yeah. I have another one that I can set up onto another location uh -huh. on stage 
Yeah, like uh, kind of like Slash. Yeah. He Kirk, has Kirk seven, Hammett. Kirk Hammett. Yeah. Yeah. He so, has. <laughs> I think he has the, them every the, every five meters. Baby accepts six controllers. Okay. So so uh -huh. I have another one okay. that I, I can set up, for example, on the other side mm, of the front. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't actually on that show. I don't use the Wawa that much. Uh, I use it on on one ballot solo. Um, and then, then for example, we have like a duel with two of us on some of the songs. I yeah. could kick it in yeah. every now and then for those. But for me, uh, Wah is uh, as as wonderful as it is. Uh, it's one of the uh, misused effects, <laughs> overused effects. It, it's sort of like, you know, you know, that somebody's about to drown, and you throw him the ring from the boat. <laughs> The ring is like the wall of pedal. <laughs> yeah, I, shit, I don't know what to do. I just kick wow, wow. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let, let's make this crazy production trick. Yeah. Let's put wow, wow in it. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. But when used corre right, correctly, I mean, yeah. I, I use quite a lot of wow, wow. Yeah. But uh, the way I try to use it is more like a tone shape. Oh, yeah, it's, it's kind of like a kinda, park, parked walk. Kind yeah, kind of like cocky situation. I don't move it. Yeah. Like that yeah. much. I just like the you know when you when you find that the sweet spot. Yeah. And you just kind of keep it there and maybe just a little mm. add it add it. But uh, but but yeah. So uh, but definitely definitely like you said, yeah, if if you use wah wah. <laughs> So but it's like it's, any it's other. It's very any silent. It's you know, yeah. there's no control yeah. noise. Yeah, since there's true. no yeah. pot there, yeah. it's less yeah. like a cold controller yeah. for this. Yeah. yeah, yeah, cool. So that's basically, basically it. Uh, I don't think that we have any corner untouched. No, I, mean, I think I think this was. Uh, although we talked briefly about this, but this uh, was uh, very enlightening to me and hopefully to to you also, and. Uh, you know, please uh, check out Raskasta uh, Yolua from uh, you know your streaming services, or if you happen to be in Finland or found something a physical copy, I I suggest you. I mean, yeah, you think it's Christmas songs, but the way these guys have done them, they kind of they they own them. The the arrangements are bold, brave, and beautiful, and there's some amazing guitar playing. On the on the album by Erka and by by another another great great Finnish guitar player Thomas Mainola. So uh, uh, check them out and like Erka said, Dark Sarah and and uh, you know uh, if you're in Finland during Christmas time, oh yeah, don't miss out the the shows because it's it's uh, pretty damn entertaining I must say <laughs> because these guys can play but they can also entertain. So uh, yeah, hey. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Erko. Thanks, thanks for having me. Check this in the mail, as I said. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, uh, until next time, let's see who I, I have with me on this... Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna call this, maybe just to gear to Wankfest. <laughs> there you go. Wankfest it is, then. <laughs> okay, until next time. See bye. you guys, bye.